hey there, Bell Mathewin here. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a different video for us. We're going to do snapshot 18w43b. Uh, we're going to take a look at all the new stuff for the snapshots for 1.14 and uh, see if we can't find a bamboo jungle or something like that. Alright, let's see. So I know there's jungle. This is the seed that I'm doing my single player survival series in. Uh, in fact, let me throw that up on the screen. Well, actually, there's a there's a command for that now. There you go. You can pause the video and take a look at that. Copy it onto your world if you want to take a look. Uh, I know there's a bunch of jungle to the. Uh, west of spawn so straight west from spawn there's uh, this j this jungle island and apparently the bamboo biome uh, you'll find it nestled in any jungle biome well there that looks like some right there there we go yep so use that seed fly a little bit to the west and you can check it out for yourself too definitely feels a little jittery uh, my frame rate but yeah a little bit a little bit jumpy but uh, from everything I've been reading and everything I've heard so far these biomes should just kind of nestle themselves in it's not gonna be like it like in the old days when uh, a new biome meant there was gonna be herky-jerky borders and weird cut-ins and all that stuff it looks like it'll just these will just kind of spawn in an unexplored and in a jungle area that you haven't actually loaded before uh, much like other new content that is not biome specific now i have yet to see a panda spawn in the wild i don't know if they're doing that or not yet but i do have panda eggs so we can take a look at those uh, probably a little bit later but yeah this biome is really nice I mean, being a fan of the Mega Taiga biome, of course I'm all for anything that has a little bit of pod soil. It just uh, kind of breaks up in contrast with the green ice. I like it. And can we stand on one of these? I wonder. So there's the hitbox. We can. No. Yeah, we can actually stand on those. That's awesome. And apparently, well, let's get into. No. Let's try that again. Let's get into survival mode, and let's see what it what it's like to break these. Supposedly, you break the bottom one, much like kelp, they all come crumbling down. All right, it takes a little bit to do that. Uh, let's see what kind of what tools. Huh. Now where is my? Am I not? Oh yeah. So let's go to uh, creative mode real quick. Grab ourselves some tools because according to the patch notes. We're gonna, a, a sword will chop right through this one swipe. So let's try an X, pickaxe. Uh, I don't suppose hoe or shovel matter. And go back into survival. All right, so it takes a couple seconds. That with the pickaxe seems to take about the same amount of time. Now with the axe, it takes about half the amount of time. And with the sword, oh, yeah. Oh, man, yeah, but it definitely kills your frame rates, just like when you break kelp. But yeah, that works. I guess they must be going with the uh, idea that if you were actually in a bamboo forest, you would probably have a machete on you. I'm guessing that's where their minds were at when they when they made that choice. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's go back into creative. Oh my god. <laughs> Look how quickly that piled up. 
That was a couple of seconds of swinging a sword, and I got uh, three and a half stacks. So yeah, if you want to check it out, the uh, seed right there on the screen in red and green. And uh, fly a little bit west from spawn. You can check out uh, one of the new bamboo biomes instead of searching seed by seed and hoping you get lucky. And we're back in a uh, creative flat world. I set up a bunch of stuff to test and a bunch of stuff to show off. And I think we're just going to go right down the uh, change log. Uh, bamboo blocks are up first. Now these things, you can take and use them as fuel. They grow real quick. Let's grab some of the supplies. Now let's see if I knock that down and I plant one and I use a little bit of bone meal on it. And you can see it had like a little pine cone almost texture to it. And apparently it can grow one to two blocks up to uh, about 16 blocks between 12 and 16 blocks tall and it can go up one to two blocks every time you hit it with bone meal and that must be the limit because it stopped it won't grow anymore uh, you can also use it as fuel source uh, four bamboo will smelt one stone and by the way I have to add this stuff grows incredibly fast and smooth stone and we can do smooth sandstone uh, you can also put quartz in there to get smooth quartz now and red sandstone in there to get smooth red sandstone uh, we'll be seeing those a little bit later in the video but that could be a viable fuel source uh, assuming that especially if these grow as quick as they seem and assume and you could easily adapt that into any sugarcane farm or any kelp farm just above the water so it could be a pretty easily easily uh, farmable fuel source that doesn't require any crafting like the uh, kelp requires you to craft it up for it to become actually efficient and even even to just do the regular kelp kelp and not the kelp block it still requires you to burn it first so this could be something that you have set up to a sugarcane farm and that is funneled right into the fuel source of your furnace all right let's get rid of these also in the update Uh, we already saw where bamboos, where bamboo spawns, and uh, oh man, I, I like that biome a lot. It looks really good. We've also got pandas. Uh, it seems like there's about seven different types. Now you can tell by their faces. I'm not sure what those two are, but that one right there, you can kind of see its eyebrows going down in an angry face. He's the angry one. There's one eaten. Uh, there's one in here somewhere. Well, that one drooled a little bit. <laughs> that one's got his tongue sticking out. I guess there's like six or seven variants. Uh, I'll probably do a video for them on their own because they kind of deserve that. So, as cute as they are, we're going to leave them. Although, I will do... You guys a salad and make a couple of babies because oh they're so cute <laughs> yeah look at the baby look at oh it's angry baby yeah I guess uh, the parents have a chance to or not even just a chance but the parents can pass their traits on down to the babies and there's supposed to be a brown one as well a brown polar bear but I have yet to see it I didn't spend a whole lot of time on those so, also, the uh, crafting recipe for mushroom stew and rabbit stew, you know, two of the least popular foods of all because they don't stack, 
Uh, I guess the recipes have been made shapeless. So you don't have to try to remember how they go. You just have to remember what the ingredients are from now on. Now let's get those out of here. And then go, then I guess we'll just go right down this list here. Then we have the loom. The loom is a new block. It's got a real nice texture. I mean, you could definitely use this as kind of an oriental. Well, let's see. I play, keep placing them like that. Well, that kind of looks like an old 50s radio. Uh, but this side of it kind of looks like orient one of those oriental panel walls. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm not an expert. But uh, let me get those out of our vision. So before, to get special patterns, you would have to combine a golden apple with a banner and some dye, wither skeleton skull to get that skull and crossbones design, creeper, which is creeper head, which is super hard to get, to get the creeper design, and uh, oxide daisy to get the flower design. Now, you don't have to do that. You have, well, you only have to do it once because in s those recipes have been removed and now instead you combine a creeper head, an oxide daisy, uh, an enchanted golden apple or a wither skeleton skull with a piece of paper and it makes a pattern. And this pattern, uh, I can show you real quick, this pattern does not get used up. You just stick it down in there, you put your dies you put your banner and you can use this and you see it does not use up the pattern so now you only need to get one creeper skull which in itself will be a challenge and one enchanted golden apple which could take forever to find and i like the i like those designs and i like the fact that now they're patterns so you don't have to use like 50 skulls if you like that pattern with the skull and crossbone you just use up one make a pattern don't lose the pattern uh, I guess in other news these can also be used instead of all of the designs that you would have to like Google patterns for you can now just stick your die in there stick your uh, banner in there and choose your pattern. You like that pattern? All you gotta do is click on it. So much nicer. So much nicer. It, this makes banners more accessible to the to the average player, uh, including me. I very rarely ever touch the banners because I didn't I didn't want to have to look up all these patterns and follow like a convoluted. You have to do this to get that, and you have to combine. Yeah, that was that was too much. This, however, I can use. All right, so that covers banners. Much more accessible to, to everybody. And very nice. I, I really like it, and the block looks nice. All right, they now everybody's going to love to hear this. Cornflower is going to spawn in, in the world now. And uh, I assume we'll be able to farm it. That makes blue dye. Lapis no longer does. That's uh. Oh, I guess it still does. So lapis still can be, but that's that's a resource that you want to leave for enchanting, or you want to use as building blocks. The flower finally gives us blue dye without having to use up all of our lapis. So, cyan builds, light blue, blue, purple, all of that, not, not nearly as bad as it used to be. I really like that change. Uh, the same with, there's a wither flower now. That does not spawn in the world. I'll, I'll go over that in a second. Uh, there is lily of the valley. Gives us white dye. So now, bone meal, you don't have to use bone meal to get white dye. And uh, they removed the crafting, they removed cocoa beans as a dye. You can use cocoa beans to get, now you can get brown dye. 
as its own thing. So now I guess they unified all unified all the dies, so the dies are all act all actually say die in their name. Uh, you can still use ink sacks to get black dye, and it's probably still going to be the best way. But there may be another option. Over here, I set up a little a little something. Actually, let's let's get rid of a couple of things here. And give ourselves some stuff to spawn in. And apparently, although it'll be hard, it would be hard to trap a wither. But apparently, withers killing entities. So let's put it. Oh, that's dying. Where? All right. Well, if you want to be up there, then be up there. All right, you see? Everything it kills has a chance to drop. Uh, let's clear out a couple of spots. Yeah, but everything it kills has a chance to drop the uh, withering rose. Is this my multi-shot bow? It is. So this is a fully enchanted wither shot crossbow, or multi-shot crossbow, with the uh, quick charge three. Doesn't it? It is actually pretty fairly quick. Now I honestly thought that bedrock was going to hold him, because uh, I don't want him to fly over and destroy my the area that I set up to show you guys everything. So, oh no, no, no. You know what, let's, uh, let's switch tactics. I want a diamond axe. No, you stay over here. <laughs> yeah, un unintentional. So I, I may cut part of this out. Especially if he blew up any of my setup. <laughs> oh, how did he get through that bedrock box? It doesn't have to be more than one layer, unless it's just because his head wasn't stuck in it. I don't know. If any of you guys know, let me know down in the comments so I can uh, not do this again in a in a future tutorial. All right, so. Withering, yeah, see, I got four withering roses out of those mobs being killed. So there's some potential. There's got to be a way to farm that. I, I haven't thought too much about it, but I'm going to. Uh, they can be used for black dye. But more importantly... If you place them down on the ground, they can kill mobs. It's killing that mob right there, or killing the sheep. And uh, we have a wither effect that's not going away while we're standing on it. Now we back away a little bit, and we lose the effect. But there's potential for this to be some sort of mob farm. Maybe replace the, uh, maybe that could replace magma blocks. I don't know, it's something, to, it's something for everybody to think about and look at. And, uh, of course, all the brand new flowers and the bamboo can be put into flower pots. And a couple more decoration blocks. Always a, always a welcome thing. Uh, books. Books are now up to 100 pages. Book and quills. Uh, and I can... Uh, I can adjust and fix typing so you used to have to erase everything to go back to here and put a space right now I can just click 
fit space. I can do Control A to select all of it, Control C to copy, and Control V, I can paste everything. So you can copy, you can paste, you can highlight, you can go back and fix anything. You can just erase a little part. Finally, finally, we can we can fix any typos that we make in these books without erasing the the par a paragraph to get to our typo. So nice. All right, and here they added. Uh, well, we already had another another brick stairs and nether brick slabs, but they changed the recipe for the nether brick fence to be uh, sticks on the outside and uh, two nether bricks on the inside. Uh, we also got nether brick walls. We got red nether brick walls, stairs, and slabs. Very nice. Uh, here's quartz. You can see on the right side, about halfway down the, the block of text. That's quartz, stairs, slabs, and blocks. We already had those, but now they're smooth quartz, stairs, and blocks. Now, I thought maybe there'd be a difference, like maybe a like connected texture or something. I'm not seeing any difference, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I thought maybe the texture would connect and you would and be flat and smooth, but I'm not seeing the difference. Uh, 1.13 gave us prismarine stairs and slabs, but we now have prismarine walls. We have end walls, we have end stair or end brick stairs, and end brick slabs. Uh, we also now we already had the cobblestone mossy wall, I believe, but now we have the stairs and the slabs to go with it, as well as the stone brick walls and uh, crap I didn't put them in there uh, let, let me take a quick peek let's grab some of that action oh yeah we already had stone stone brick stairs and stone brick slabs we just did not have the walls but we now also have the mossy variants we have the mossy wall the mossy stairs the mossy slab those are going to, all of those are going to come in very handy for some of our builds, like basement builds and mixing up the textures and stuff. I'm, I'm really looking forward to using that stuff. We now have andesite stairs, andesite slabs, andesite walls, as well as smooth andesite stairs and slabs, smooth diorite stairs and slabs, and of course the wall, the non-smooth uh, slabs and stairs and same with the uh, with the granite all no not the greatest but I I'm super happy thank you Mojang for giving us more variations and I'm sure we can definitely find a use for these especially the the smooth variants the, those look very nice yeah I, I can definitely see those fitting into the builds the uh, non-polished, I mean, yeah, I, actually that those could be useful for texturizing and, mi and mixing up stone blocks and stuff. Speaking of stone, we've got stone stairs, stone slabs now, and smooth, the smooth stone slab that we're used to, that we all love and adore, as well as the smooth stone block. Those are now, well, this now actually requires us to use smooth stone to make this variant of the smooth stone slab. Um, and that variant, the smooth stone, all you do is take stone, smelt it, and it turns into that. It's the same process. You take sandstone, you smelt it into smooth sandstone. And red sandstone is melted into smooth red sandstone. Uh, speaking of sandstone, we now have the slabs for smooth, the stairs for smooth, and walls for both colors. So many options. Just just look at the sheer number of blocks. 
three of those flowers, four of those dies, and just about every block along that row, as well as as well as the the bamboo itself, and a and a, the loom over there, those are all brand new blocks. Those did not exist before. I mean that that's a lot. That's that's awesome. That's really really nice. And I just kind of made a wall of all the walls. Uh, we also now have all the different kinds of signs. Uh, you can no longer mix and match woods to make the signs. It looks like they use the uh, the log texture for the stick and the plank texture for the sign itself. Hello, I am Derp, and I know it. Yeah, I just wrote something on them so that you could see the text. The text definitely stands out. Probably a little bit too much because from here it kind of looks weird. But I guess at the same time, at least from back here, you know something is written on it. that It's worth coming closer to read it. So I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to be happy that we have new stuff. Uh, another thing they added, uh, apparently it was a community request. Uh, let's see, that one's the piercing one. Was to be able to shoot the flowers. You've been to the end. You've tried to get these flowers off. you got to ender pearl up there or stack yourself up there and hit them with an axe. Not anymore. You can use a crossbow and that will knock them off. Or you can use a regular bow. And that's going to make uh, that's going to make this really easy to farm. You just hit a couple of them off and then go ahead just like you normally would to collect your coarse fruit. I mean that's that's a huge quality of life change. I'm sure my old lady's going to be really happy about that one. All right. And since we have an axe out, even though we don't need it because we're in creative mode, uh, another community request was for leaves to drop sticks along with saplings and the apples. So I don't know how long it's going to take to get some of those to show, but we'll take a look, see if anything falls. Okay, coarse fruit does not belong up there. Well, there's a sapling. There's another sapling. I don't know if it is just when they're despawning or if, uh, well, breaking them in creative probably doesn't drop anything. All right, but we'll give that a second. Oh, what else was there? There was there was so much to try to remember for this update. So I got all that. Pandas kind of deserve their own video. We talked about smelting. Uh, let's talk about the crossbow while we're waiting for those to despawn, and then we'll check back over there. Uh, Multi-shot now. We have that. And that... I could... Sh I'm not shooting the... I'm not shooting the pandas. But it shoots three arrows. And uh, I'm in creative, so you did, couldn't tell. But it only actually consumes one out of your inventory. So that's a very nice feature. And then piercing... Uh, I don't have anything set up. Yeah. Let's let's give ourselves some pillagers, and we'll just kind of stack them all up here. By the way, pillagers. Uh, which one's piercing? That one. So piercing is supposed to shoot. You should be able to shoot through without reducing the damage. Uh, and the level, oh wow, they drop emeralds. I didn't know that. The level of piercing tells how many mobs you can shoot through. Uh, like piercing one will get you through this mob to the next one. You saw him jump over there. Uh, level two gets you through this mob and the next two and so on and so forth. All the way up to f four. Uh, you can put in breaking. You can also put mending on these. Uh, mending does work. Infinity does not. 
Uh, they're apparently reserving that solely for the bow and arrow. Wow, my inventory is filling up with all kinds of junk. <laughs> it's almost like I'm building something in survival. So, unbreaking mending. Uh, quick charge has three levels, and uh, each level, I think it increase. I think the patch note said it increases the shot time by 0.25 seconds or something like that. But uh, this is on. This has quick charge three, and that's not really a horrible amount of time. It's actually kind of equivalent to a bow and arrow getting it all the way back, except that the crossbow bolts don't arc as much. They shoot harder and faster, which means that you don't have to aim up. It did arc a little bit, but not as much as the bow did. So that's that's good to know. All right, and yes, it it drops sticks, so sticks are now a thing. Uh, speaking of which, uh, one of the last things I have to show you is not super exciting, but two bamboo can craft into one stick. I don't really know where that's going to be useful. But, now you know. <laughs> Another uh, community request that they took into account was uh, a way to farm wool. So, a lot of us have always kind of wanted to be able to take a dispenser, put some shears in it, and put a sheep right in front of it, and voila, it auto-shears. Uh, I actually have a hopper minecart in that block right there. I don't know why it didn't grab. Uh, but that's that's beside the point, and that doesn't really matter. So let's let's dump our inventory in here real quick. So much junk. <laughs> okay. So that is now a thing, and uh, pressing it again does not toss the the shears out it they'll they'll stay in there no matter what now if you want to actually spit out uh, a pair of shears you're gonna have to use a dropper but there's lots of farm potential in that i just don't have time in today's video to explore it and i suppose the final thing that we're going to cover today is uh so we got pillager, villager, and illager beast. Let's see a couple of these. Let's put a couple of those out. And let's see what they do to villagers. Oh my goodness, those things look awesome. See how they kind of like jut their head out? Yeah, look at that. They, like, extend their head to attack. And if I'm not mistaken, they'll, like, run over here. Yep. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that's implemented. And then, uh... I can kind of think of a farm like the, the Villager Breeder in our Survival Series. If you haven't checked that out, you should check that out. Uh, we, we go into pretty extensive detail on quite a few things because I'm just trying to share what I do know and have some fun with it but uh, I'm thinking like the villager breeder we have in our single player which is kind of just a hut like this with the villager breeder inside if we were to uh, like dig a pit with water flowing to funnel them if these guys spawn near villages at certain times and then go spawn near what minecraft considers a village which would be like our villager breeder and these guys track them track the villagers they would maybe with trapdoors put along the side here 
they would maybe fall down in and be washed away to be farmed to a, some magna blocks or even some wither roses now that we have those or lava whatever we want uh, I don't know if they're only going to raid uh, s like generated Minecraft villages or if they're going to raid anything the game considers a village it'll be interesting to see oh and these guys trampled the crops nice these big guys trampled the crops all right which way are we which way back this way and that's why I put a little breadcrumb so anyway I hope you enjoyed I hope uh, I hope I covered everything and uh, you know if you like the video like comment subscribe you know leave a message all of that helps out the channel just kind of lets me know that what I'm doing is uh, worth the time I'm putting into it and uh, helps get my uh, helps get my uh, confidence up I guess it helps get my uh, self of sense of satisfaction of a job well done up there so until next time this is Bell Mathewin. You should definitely check out my other series, which will be coming up on the screen. And uh, I hope everybody has a good night.